Steve coming tonight or not? I'm sorry, Rick, I couldn't hear you. Is Steve coming tonight or no? Zach, is Steve Zach here tonight? No, no. Okay. All right. Okay, well, I can start. Um, I just want to introduce us to those that have not met us. Um, I'm Deb Hetrick, and I'm the lead for this project for uh, recruiting you a new police chief. For Hi, the Deb. Group. Deb, yes. Deb, I'm so sorry, but I need to have the chair or the um, president of the commission call it to order, and they just have meeting minutes to go through before we get to your, oh, oh. your piece. So okay. no worries, he will call on you in just a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, it is now 531. Tuesday, November 30th, um, Ms. Ewald, uh, can I safely assume the notice of open uh, public meeting was posted? Yes. All right. Then I would, noticing we have a quorum with Commissioner Bullock and, uh, Commission, and Commissioner Anderson here, um, I would call the meeting to order. Um, our first order of business would be to look at the minutes from the uh, November 2nd, 2021 meeting minutes. Take a quick look at those. Um, so just to kind of move it forward so we can get part of the presentation going, um, Commissioner Bullock, have you had a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes? I have. Does it square with your memory of the event? It, it does square. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Anderson, uh, have you had a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes as well? I have, it looks All good. Right. And does that, does that uh, square with your memory of the event as well? It does. All right, then I'd be looking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 2nd of the police. Make board. a motion to approve the minutes from November 2nd. I second that emotion. I mean, that mo motion, sorry. <laughs> Are you singing? I think I am singing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we have, a, uh, we have a motion on the table. We have a first and a second. I ask uh, Ms. Ewald if you wanna go, go ahead and call the roll. Sure. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Bullock? Yes. President Cole? Yes. Motion carries 3-0. Excellent. So two things out of the day, out of the work for today. All right, so I would say Ms. Hetrick, uh, we're now at our agenda item number three, the review of the police chief recruitment timeline. And I believe that would be you. And you're muted. I'm sorry, ma'am. All right, now I get to go. Okay, um, I'm just gonna do a very quick introduction for those that haven't met me. I'm Deb Hetrick, I'm the lead on this project. We very much look forward to working with you. We have four members of our team. Um, me, Dee Dee Morgan, who is currently in Saudi Arabia, helping them uh, improve and modernize their correction system, but she uh, can join us by Zoom when the nine hour time difference works out. And she's also doing other work behind the scenes. Brian Bridges um, and uh, Wayne Strong. And Wayne, I'll let you introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Wayne Strong. I'm a retired Madison police uh, officer. I worked for the Madison Police Department from 1989 until 2013, which time I retired at the rank of Lieutenant. Uh, prior to that, I started my law enforcement career with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I worked as a sheriff, uh, sheriff's detention deputy working in the jail from 1986 to 1989 before coming to Madison. Uh, since retiring in 1989, I've done a variety of different things uh, in private sector, public sector, nonprofit. So um, looking forward to working with each of you. Thank you. Okay, Wayne, do you want to get us started? Sure, we just wanted to kick things off. Um, essentially, we just want to know from you folks what uh, what direction you think um, you would like to see us go with, with helping in this with the selection process. And if there's any questions that you have that we can answer uh, to help 
to help us reach the goal of what you guys want to accomplish, um, uh, feel free to to let us know. So that's where why don't we start there? Okay, um, Wayne, you, you keep going in and out a little bit. So, um... uh, yeah, can you guys hear me okay now? No. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, should I start over? No, I think I think we caught most of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is it the volume that's too low, or, or or am I coming in and out? It just sounds like there's something over your microphone or something. I don't mm -hmm. think there probably is, but that's the way it comes off. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> if you don't have questions, I would be happy to let you know what we've got set up so far. And if you want, we can go through the schedule mm -hmm. that was in your packet. Mm -hmm. So, so um, just to let you know, I'm the only person that's on the police commission that was at your presentation, right? Correct. All right, and the other two, I don't think they've seen the presentation. Um, so I think they probably, if you would just present what you're gonna go through, I think they would have a better response after that, so. Okay. Get that particular paper out here. So obviously, um, this is our first meeting uh, with you, the police commission. Um, we've already done with Rebecca and Tyler's help, couldn't do it without them, set up a number of things. Um, what our intention is, is before we do anything else, to do listening sessions with uh, the village board, the police commission, um, uh, department heads, um, the Human Relations Commission, and then other stakeholders, which include the faith leaders, which include, we included St. Robert's School with the uh, faith leaders, with the school district, with the bid, is that, I think that's business improvement district? That, that is correct. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, with the village manager and assistant manager, we will also do a listening session with the public. Um, what the listening sessions consist of is eight questions. They will be the same questions asked of each group. Um, there's no personal information that's requested. There's no names that will be written down. It's totally confidential, whatever people's answers are. Um, and they're the same questions for each group. The police department, we will do the same thing, same questions, but we plan on doing them in person. The reason for that is, well, for one thing, Zoom saves us a lot of travel time. But And so that's why we can do most of them, especially with groups, it's so much more convenient also for them to be able to do Zoom rather than have to meet in a certain location. But we are going to do the police uh, department in person because in prior uh, recruitment processes, we found that the police officers want to be indiv individually interviewed and that it goes much better in person. So tomorrow I have a meeting with your interim police chief and he and I are going to figure out a Zoom meeting of course. He and I are going to figure out how he can schedule that with the least amount of inconvenience and overtime and et cetera for the department members. Um, most likely it'll be Wayne and I that'll be traveling down to do them. And if we each have to do a group or whichever way we have to do it uh, to make it work, we'll do it that way. Does that help, Craig? Yeah, yeah that, that's perfect. Um, Jennifer, Rick, do you guys have any questions? I do. Um, to start with, uh, what's the process for advertising and getting the word out that there's an opportunity? Okay, so that good question. Um, and Brian Bridges is the one that's going to be working with you for the advertising. So first of all, we need to do the listening sessions because what they do is actually, 
I can tell you what the questions are and maybe that will help you to understand better what we're getting at. What we're trying to do is get at what people are looking for in a new police chief. So we ask, what are the best things about the Shorewood PD? If you could change or improve one or two things, what would they be and why those specifically? What characteristics do you consider to be most important for the next police uh, chief of police to possess? Describe your perception of the relationship between the police department and the community. What would you say is the most important criminal issue for the police department to address in Shorewood? What do you feel is the most important issue for the new chief of police to deal with regarding the community? What would be a good first step for the police department to address issues of equity, diversity, systemic racism, and implicit bias in the community? And how important is it to you that the police engage in community policing? So I can send those to Rebecca and she can send them out to you if you're interested in having a copy. Um, we're trying to get at, you know, obviously some very basic stuff. And then we want to specifically address equity, diversity, systemic racism, implicit bias, and community policing. And what we hope to get from that are a number of uh, themes. And that's generally what happens. From each group, you get themes that pop up. And you know more than one person gives the same answer. And then you'd look at all the groups together and you pick out the themes that pop up the most often. And you use that if necessary to uh, modify your job description and also in the job announcement. So now back to your question, long way around. Um, so when we get that done and we get, then we'll, then we'll be able to do the job description and the job announcement. At that point, we put together an application packet and that packet will be available. First of all, it has to be entered on WileyNet, which is the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Network. And that's the law, it has to go there. And from there, people look at employment opportunities and that pops up. Um, so that's available to anybody. Uh, it's, it, you don't have to sign on, uh, log in, whatever, to get on WileyNet. On WileyNet, there will be a link to your website um, somehow to let people download application materials. Then, in, and then in addition to that, um, we'd like to you know, have it on your website. Um, we would be emailing and sending the announcement to surrounding jurisdictions. As far as papers, uh, newspapers go, we would do uh, the, um, the larger cities in Wisconsin, we would do Green Bay, we would do Oshkosh, we would do Eau Claire, um, just what I can think of off the top of my head, La Crosse, um, Milwaukee. And then um, also, if you want us to go farther, uh, we can do Minneapolis, uh, you know, we can go farther than that. Then we have specific groups that we'll target that we'll also um, advertise with. Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, um, the Wisconsin Association of Women Police. I'm trying to think who else there is um, off the top of my head, but there are an, oh, the Wisconsin um, Association of Chiefs of Police. Uh, the Milwaukee, uh, Associ or Milwaukee County Association of Chiefs of Police, any other counties that you want us to hit will do. Does that answer your question, Richard? For the most part, I'll, I'll so most of your, most of the advertising we're going to do is going to be inside the state of Wisconsin, and, and then it would be targeted outside if we were specifically targeting outside. 
you can target outside. If you want us to do it with the International Association of Chiefs of Police, we can certainly do that. And then it would go actually all over the world. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking nation nationwide here, or there. Um, uh, you know, there's. I think doesn't the National Association of Chiefs of Police have their own publication as well? They may. Okay. Um, that I would have to. That I can check on. Um, also, Noble uh, uh, is national. They don't have a branch. They used to have a branch in Milwaukee, and they don't have one anymore. So that. Um, that would be national. The, that's the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Um, you know, we can do anything that you want. Um, and if you have more suggestions of uh, places for us to advertise, that's great. Because okay. I think I agree with you, Rick. I'd really like to spread our net as far and wide as possible on this. Okay. I just, uh, and, and I think it also depends on the amount of feedback we get through the listening sessions. Um, if I'm not skipping my turn, can I ask another question? I'm sure. in front of anybody else? Okay. <laughs> um, looking at, now, the, the December 13th listening session at 7 p.m., that's going to be a public in-person session, correct? Well, we were going to do it in person, but then in speaking to Rebecca and Tyler, um, they felt that we would get a lot more participation if we did it via Zoom because people may still feel uncomfortable gathering, you know, in what would be a large group. Um, if you have a different feeling on it, you know, Tyler, I think, Rebecca. I think all our meetings have to be Zoom right now, Rick. I think that's like a village thing. I, uh, all of Sorry, go ahead, Rebecca. All of our meetings are are virtual right now. We will be transitioning to to in person meetings um, potentially by the end of January, based upon the installation of new equipment. Um, so, I would anticipate, but your timeline for this, Deb, I want to say is December thirteenth, correct? That one is December thirteenth, right. right? We were going to do the village board first, and then the public, correct? Now, Rebecca, while I have you, is that going to um, interfere with our ability to do the police uh, in person, masked and socially distanced? I don't believe so, no. Okay. See, if, if I can, um, how difficult would it be to have a Zoom and then the opportunity for an in-person? And if we could potentially use the uh, high school auditor high school gymnasium, it would be easy enough to stay socially distant and masked at that point. But if we're going to interview the cops in person, it might be good to allow the public an opportunity in person, as well as one by Zoom. Just it's my knee jerk reaction. Well, what is the nature of the meeting on the 13th again? And we're not interviewing people yet, right? It's just a listening session. It, it would, yeah, a listening session is what's, is what's in the document for weeks two to five, uh, public in-person listening session. And maybe that's a little bit, you know, maybe that might be a little bit later if we have to wait until January, but um, especially given what's going on, but it just, if we're going to do in-person interviews with the with the officers, it makes sense that we may want to have an in-person opportunity for the uh, for the public. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe nobody shows, but you're better off having had that. And and I think a Zoom in-person listening, a Zoom session is not a bad idea as well. We may get feedback with both, but. Um, not everybody's comfortable with this format. Well, I can agree with you on that. And actually um, our boss, Sue Reisling, who's the president of the company had really felt strongly about having it in person. Um, but then after we talked about it and the thought was, well, we'll get more people via Zoom. There are people as well, particularly older people, older than me, that don't have 
you know, computer access or aren't comfortable doing it that way, um, we could make it happen. And I, I shouldn't say I can't, but if you want to stay on schedule and have a police chief um, sometime in April, we can't wait um, for the second one until um, later because in order to get that advertising out, I need to have all the listening sessions done. Now there will be an opportunity for the public to meet in person um, the three final candidates. I don't know if that makes you feel any better. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's really important. I mean, but I'm not sure, like if all the other village entities are not having public meetings right now. I'm not sure that we can as the police commission. I understand, I, I much prefer an in public meeting, but frankly, if there are older people who can't use Zoom, they probably shouldn't be coming to an open in-person meeting. <laughs> They're vulnerable, you know? That's a good point, yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. Deb, just a point of clarification. So let's say a member of the public isn't able to make the forum on December 13th. Are we offering other options for them to provide input? Well, absolutely. Like if they wanted to submit in writing their responses, would they be allowed to do that in our current process? Oh, sure. Um, and you're going to advertise the public meeting um, on your website, however you are going to do it. And you can certainly, um, you know, put in there that they can submit it in writing. Um, they could send it by email uh, to me. Um, you could put my email address in there. Um, if you want, you can uh, even put my phone number in there and they could call me. Because, you know, for, for the police commission that might, you know, if you're worried about an alternative method of providing feedback in case someone's not comfortable with the setting, that is, a, is, is another option that we could, because we're doing the communication to promote the December 13th forum this week in our communications. So in that messaging, I can put that as an alternative message to promote in case people aren't comfortable with this format or unable to attend on the 13th. Tyler, depending on the level of feedback you get from whether we receive any feedback at all, but depending on the level of feedback you get about wanting an in-person or so forth, would we be able to readdress this later next month? I'm just... Well, we probably want to, Deb, correct me if I'm wrong, we want to wrap up the input process by the 17th that week in the timeline. So, I mean, like if I put in the, let's say the manager's memo this week, the format, and we received comments about the lack of an in-person, you know, I'd probably be able to have a good idea on that trend by that following week. So. Um, yeah, we, we can do, um, we can do as late as December 30th um, because we have in our, in the schedule that um, the, uh, oh yeah, we want the village board to approve the updated job description. That's December 20th. So yeah, we would have to, um, I think you're right about the 17th. Or even the 16th, because that's when the packet goes out. So yeah. I think that's the magic date. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, Rick, in your scenario, that would still give us, you know, a week to strategize, but, you know, kind of as, as, as Jen mentioned, we're, we're, you know, with all the committees, we have been operating in a virtual environment. And I know there's been a strong desire to remain consistent until we're ready to go on moving and transitioning, which we're close as, as, as Becky mentioned, but. And, uh, and we, we could, um, whenever Rebecca, I'm not sure when you said that um, you might be able to have an in-person meeting. We can do the we can do one then. Um, that's fine. I I don't think the input will be a lot different than the input we get from other groups, and we can take it into consideration when we review the applications 
rather than having to have it before we send things out. Does that sound good? I think that that question is actually for um, President Cole. Yes, that's who the question was for, sorry. Yep. All right, well, it take, I, I may actually solve that particular problem if we have to wait until January for that. As I look at your timeline, I don't see this as a meeting of the police commission. I see it as just a public in-person listening session on the document. So I think depending on the level of feedback we get, um, we may want to open that up as a possibility as a possibility afterwards, if somebody wants to give their feedback in person, especially given that we're interviewing the cops in person. Okay. Sorry, Rick, I missed the last part of that, especially what? Especially as we're inter interviewing the, uh, I said cops, but police officers in person. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. That's what everybody calls us. Um, would you prefer that we interview the police department virtually? No, no, I, 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 I actually, I agree with you. You'll let me point a context. Um, I, I was a sheriff's deputy for about nine years before I went to law school. So I've, oh. I know the, I know that the, uh, the folks or the type of folks that you are start trying to get feedback from, and yes, you're better off to get feedback from them in person versus this environment. Um, so I do think it's smart to interview them in person. I just, I just prospectively want to make sure that we've got some sort of opportunity should need be for the public to have that sort of in, in person. I know uh, for the city of Milwaukee police chief process, they had a number of listening sessions and at least two of those were in person. Okay. Um, Rick, do you I'm just looking at the schedule here. I, I do think that in-person listening session could occur after you've got the, the application materials finalized oh, as, more oh. of a, as more of a, just an opportunity to see, because I don't, I think you're right. The feedback will be, a, will be consistent. It, it, it generally, it tends to be, um, we tend to see the same themes over and over, but I do think that if we can have it, I, I don't remember what the date was, but mid-January, that's before the applications would be due. And that, if we hear something different, we can use that, you know, when we screen the applications. Yeah, uh, I'm open to anything. <laughs> well, and let me, let me query our group. What do you think, Ms. Anderson? That's fine with me. Craig, what do you think? I think that's fine too. I just have one question though. Um, so we're planning on sending out um, files of the, the questions to everybody for the listening session. How do you control the responses? Are you going to get feedback automatically sent back to you? Are you are you waiting for people to automatically, you know, raise their hand and say, "I would like to comment on that." Well, Je generally, the way that we've done it is that we've asked the president or the head of each group to say, um, you know, to sort of say, okay, you know, Linda, you know, do you want to start on question one? And then we go to, you know, Max on question one and Mike on question one. And then we, we go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what happens if we have like 30 people in there, you know? Well, we won't have 30 people except for the public listening session. And that, that's really what I'm talking about. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question because I think that the only way to do it with a group that size without going for three hours is to put the question out there and ask who would like to respond. Mm -hmm. And okay. of course, you can raise your hand on Zoom. So, all right. Okay. All right. Could we do something where we create some kind of a Google Doc that people could have access to and input their comments or responses to the questions on their own time? I mean, kind of, Tyler, I'm thinking of kind of what we did for the 
article for sure today where we, we kept this open and anybody who wanted to comment or, or make a statement had the opportunity to do that. Well, for me, that's much more attractive than having them uh, call me, <laughs> um, you know, or even email me, although I'm certainly willing to leave the email in, but I think that's a great idea. If and maybe nobody else thinks it's a great idea, but yeah, Deb, if you want, great idea. Yeah, Deb, if you want, if you want to send me your list of questions, if they're finalized, I can create a form that we just send out the link, and just state that if if you're unable to attend or want to give your individual responses, um, you know, we could certainly then collect those, um, and then Deb, I could just send you the the final responses so that you can collect in and put them in a final report, however you want to use them. Um, the only thing I would need to know is if that would be anonymous or if people would put a name with that. But other than that, I think everything else would be straightforward as far as how we do that form. Well, from my perspective, it can be not anonymous because we don't use names, you know, ever. Um, of course, being anonymous, you know, gives the opportunity for people to say weird things, but then we just disregard those if they're really weird or obscene. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Those are the vast majority of my questions. Um, uh, Mr. Bullock, do you have any others? No, no, I think I'm done with my questions for now, so. All right. Good. I, I'm, I, I'm eager to watch the process move forward, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Okay. Um, I do see Mr. Moore is in the room, but I, I think he might still be on a phone at this point. Uh, so we've got four of us in the room for... Uh, for the commissioners. So did, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I did want to see if Wayne wanted to add any thoughts to what we were just talking about. Um, no, I think everything sounds great. I like the idea of the of the uh, sending out the questionnaire so that people can take their time and give their feedback and send that back to us and we can, you know, go through all of the all of the main themes that way. It's a much uh, much cleaner process. So thanks for, for doing that. Okay. Uh, great. Okay, so uh, then I guess I don't have any more questions. Thank you very much for the presentation so far. I agree. I'm really looking forward to moving forward. The, the one question I'd have, and maybe it's more of a Rebecca question, um, if somebody like myself decides to pop in on the December 13th, December 13th session, and there's more than three of us, does it become a meeting of the police commission? We can do a, a quorum notice requirement, but on that it would also be stating that there would be no action um, on behalf of anybody, because we um, presume that there may be also be members of the village board who partic or participate or attend, but there's no action for you specifically listed. I, I just, I would wanna make sure that we run into a problem with that because I have to admit, I'd be very curious to hear what people are saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's okay. oh, all thank you. And we'll be updating you uh, periodically. So thank you. Okay, well then, I believe we've gotten through uh, our timeline, uh, the, the review of the timeline. And I believe that document is in the, uh, is in the process. Uh, or that document is in the materials that was sent out. Now, um, I think it'd be time to do the interviews for the interviews for captain. Uh, Ms. Ewald, do you have the ability to get a hold of, uh, of Acting Chief Liebenthal? Pardon me, I do. Um, so what I can do is, um... I will reach out to him um, if he'd like to make a motion to convene into closed session. I'll then um, create the breakout room and move our commissioners into that room. 
Sure. Uh, specifically for purposes of the open meeting and then moving into closed session for that specific purpose to interview those two candidates, to interview those candidates for uh, captain, I would uh, move to convene in a closed session in accordance with section 19.85 sub 1 sub C of the Wisconsin state statutes to consider issues of employment, specifically certification of a captain eligibility list. And that would be to interview captain candidates to establish an eligibility list for the position of captain and to discuss the captain candidates. I'd be looking for a motion for that. Make a motion to do all that. <laughs> I have to repeat everything back. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe it's. I Make believe a motion to move into closed session then. With the appropriate notice. And then uh, anybody else, Craig? We can't hear you, buddy. I will second that motion. That's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then, Miss Ewald, if you can just. Uh, Mr. Moore, are you in a position where you can? Uh, be verbal yet or no? I don't, I think he's on his way home from his after work meetings. So um, with a, with a, uh, if you want to call the roll, Ms. Ewald. Happy to. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Here. Bullock. Here. President Cole. Aye. Motion carries by roll call vote three zero. And I just, because Mr. All right, let's see, turn on the Brady Brunch view gallery. Okay, we're all back in the room. Uh, we just did the interviews of the candidates in closed session uh, and we've reconvened back into open session. I would be making a motion to establish the eligibility list for the captain position with the two names of Christopher Mays and Fernando Santiago in no particular order. Do I have a second? I second. All right. And then uh, Miss Ewald, if, if you can call the roll quick. I love Zoom. Got it. Sorry. Um, I think I was joining halfway through that motion. Okay. Um, so if I could just have it one more time so I could um, record that. I'd very much appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. I can repeat it. Um, I would be making a motion to establish an eligibility list for the for the captain position with the two names of Christopher Mays and Fernando Santiago in no particular order. And then I'd be looking for a second. Second. All right. And then Ms. Ewald, if you don't mind taking the yeah. vote. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Bullock. Aye. Commissioner Moore. Aye. President Cole. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Okay. Excellent. And then um, our next our next thing is adjournment. I was just wondering, uh, Miss Ewald, I would like to make, a, and I'd just like to ask a question as it related to the review of the police chief recruitment timeline. Um, something occurred to me after we met with that group and it came up that uh, they were talking to faith groups in town and they specifically just mentioned St. Robert. Um, I don't know if that means that it's only St. Robert and if it is only St. Robert, I would uh, either through yourself or I can do it by email, I'd respectfully request that they reach out to the other faith organizations in town. So St. Robert's was not the only faith organization. Um, Kingo Lutheran was on there. There was a Lutheran church on there. There was North Shore Presbyterian. Okay. It, it didn't come across during our, during our conversation. I just wanted to make sure that I just wanted to make sure on that. That's it. So then uh, given the hour, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I second it. I, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> there, Craig seconded. Then I will second it. And then um, uh, Mr. Moore, do you vote to adjourn? Yes, I do. 
Ms. Anderson, do you vote Aye. to adjourn? Aye. Craig, do you vote to adjourn? Aye. And I would vote to adjourn as well. Aye. Great. Meeting adjourns at 7.56 p.m. Thank you very much for your, uh, your uh, secretary this evening. Hey, no, my pleasure. Have a great night, you guys. Have a good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.